Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to the Wrestle Plug Podcast. It's time for your weekly state of wrestling address. That means we discuss everything that has gone on in the week of wrestling and beyond. I am your host, Darren Nix, and joining me to discuss oh, such worldly and disappointing matters is Kyle Wilkinson. Yes, yes, indeed. There is a lot to talk about this week, which is a nice change from some of the past weeks. But uh, let's get into it, shall we? Yes, lads. So the world has been burning, basically. <laughs> the whole world is just burning before our very eyes. Uh, a lot of unfortunate and miserable circumstances happening across the world. A lot of them to do with police brutality in America and, of course, the ongoing pandemic that is, of course, covid 19. Um, this, of course, affects wrestling, but wrestling is far from your thoughts when you have to see what is unfolding, unfortunately, in America. Uh, there does seem to be some good news in terms of the Justice for George Floyd campaign and his murderers. Uh, so, you know, fingers crossed that will at least bring around some sort of closure for his family and friends that were involved in such an awful tragedy. Um of course, wrestling just can't keep his fucking nose out of things, uh, nor can Jackson Riker, who pledged his allegiance to Donald Trump on the Twitter. Uh, I, I don't have the tweet at hand because, frankly, it doesn't really need to be at hand. Simply put, he said that he supports the president of the United States uh, at POTUS, uh, which, of course, is Donald Trump, and basically gave him his backing, despite the fact that Donald Trump has proven himself to be well, frankly, quite incapable of being the leader of the free world. Uh, this, of course, brought about an astonishing amount of criticism. Uh, the majority of it has to be said very warranted. Uh, Kevin Owens, in particular, was pretty furious with it and basically lambasted him across social media. Mustafa Ali, in very typical Mustafa Ali fashion, of course, um, handled it with dignity and class, as all people should do when it comes to a difference of opinion, and particularly one that may necessarily suggest that somebody might be involved in more right-wing racial tendencies. Uh, Jackson Riker, obviously, is entitled to his opinion. He's entitled to vote for who he wants. He's entitled to support who he wants. Uh, but considering the current climate... This seemed to be quite unfortunate. Uh, also made worse by the fact that some individual had leaked what looked like alleged material from his Facebook profile, uh, suggesting more inflammatory comments about uh, the lack of respect for police, uh, black people rioting, things of that nature. So uh, obviously I'm not going to quote those because we don't know, you know, factually. They may look like and appear like they are from his Facebook page, but without you know, clarification. I don't particularly want to deep dive into any kind of CSI-like behaviour when it comes to somebody's private social media accounts. Uh, needless to say, Jackson Riker, like we say, is entitled to his opinions. Um, what do you think of Jackson Riker standing up for Donald Trump at such a politically red-hot time? And also, what do you think about the reaction from a multitude of WWE superstars, uh, particularly someone like Ricochet, who almost seemed genuinely heartbroken uh, by this announcement, as he seemed to get on quite well with Jackson Riker? Well, like you said already, um, Donald Trump is watching his country burn around him. And I understand that Jackson Riker is a former vet, and I... Re 100% respect what he's done for his country, for his flag and all that. But that being said, his allegiance should be to the country, to the United States, not to the man. I think this was a very ballsy thing to say. If I remember in the tweet, he also threw in, you know, the forgotten no more, their little fucking saying for the Forgotten Sons, if this was just some attempt to get cheap heat, you're an idiot. I'm, I'm sorry, he's an idiot. Um, I know I personally quote tweeted this because the tweet said something about built to freedom, and I quote tweeted it, you know, not threatening his life, not threatening to kill his family like a bunch of people did, which is a huge overreaction. You can disagree without threatening a man's family. Like, it's... You don't... You doing that makes you just as bad as him. But, like, I did quote tweeting it saying, you know, actually, um, America was built on the backs of slavery. Like, that, 
a hundred years ago was like the, no, 60 years ago was about the civil rights movement, 60, 70 years ago, you know, about the 1960s. A hundred years before that, the bloodiest war in American history took place for the liberation of slavery. And before that, it was centuries of just white Americans sitting on their ass while their country was built for them. Kevin Owens said it best. If you guys haven't seen the tweet, go find it. I don't remember it verbatim, but I do believe uh, fucking pathetic was the tail end of it. Uh, KO was not impressed. Sami Zayn wasn't impressed. Ricochet, like you said, sounded completely heartbroken. I th- I think Ricochet is one of the nicest guys in, res- in WWE, probably. He just seems like such a genuinely good guy, and he gets along with everyone, from what I can tell. And I think this genuinely broke him. With the George Floyd thing going, with all the injustice that all black Americans are getting, like you see it, you can't go on any social media without seeing something else escalating, uh, videos of the protests going on. (sighs) Fuck, I don't understand why wrestling has to stick its dick in politics like this all the goddamn time. But back to the matter at hand, this was a very ballsy thing to say. And he's going to have to suffer the consequences. I don't think Vince is going to punish him. I don't think the Forgotten Sons will lose anything, like they're standing or anything. It's going to be an awkward locker room for him now, I think. Yeah, Jackson Wright, his exact tweet was, thankful for the President of the United States that we have. God bless America, built of freedom, forgotten no more. Uh, Mustafa Ali's reaction was, I'm thankful you posted this because I'm now aware of what you stand for. When black brothers and sisters are crying, you praise someone that refuses to acknowledge their hurt. Uh, At King Ricochet, I get you're a bad guy on TV, bad guy in inverted commas, and I'm hoping that's all this is. Even then, that ain't it. But if this is actually your true thoughts, I'll be really sad. Sad, man. Um, yeah, multiple other people, of course, jumping on it, including uh, Kevin Owens, who said that it was a shitty wrestling catchphrase as an, and an absolutely fucking pathetic decision. Yeah, it brought about quite a bit of hate. I don't have a problem with wrestling as a whole, dipping into politics. Uh, it's a very sad week. I'm a Lincoln City fan, which is a soccer slash football team over here. Not a particularly big one, although we've had a relative amount of success in the last few years. My football team's account, social media accounts, very much like a lot of social media accounts involved with anything of stature, put out a message of solidarity for black people and their strife and talking about Black Lives Matter. Now, unfortunately, uh, I don't bury my head in the sand despite being mixed race. Uh, I come from a city that is, or should I say a, a county or state, as Americans would call it, which is very well regarded for, uh, shall we say, racial tendencies. The BMP, which is the British Nationalist Party, a lot of their members, uh, the EDL as well, the English Defence League, unfortunately, a lot of their members come from this region, despite the fact that our county has an astonishing amount of Polish, Lithuanian immigrants, Bulgarian, stuff like that. But, you know, that's just pushed back, unfortunately, the way it is. People want to bury their hands, uh, heads in the sand over here and go, oh, yeah, well, we're British. We don't we don't have racism over here. Because we fucking do. <laughs> it's just as bad. The only difference is we don't have guns to shoot each other or at least not as many but that was really systematic of the problem i saw people commenting underneath uh long story short saying oh stop talking about fucking politics just talk about football nobody cares about politics etc etc when people say to me i don't really do politics i get really annoyed and i know that it's not a slight on them and they don't mean it in this way but we all do politics Because we all have to live in a society that is ruled by either a government or a justice system or, you know, something along those lines, a hierarchy of some sort, unless, of course, we're, you know, completely feral or going for walking dead. And believe it or not, there are still some societies that are close to that. So when people say, oh, I wish people wouldn't do politics or, you know, I see people uh, tweet and say, oh, I wish wrestlers would shut up and just wrestle. They have a responsibility and also a voice. Like, let's not forget those people vote too because they're people. They're not superheroes. They're not celebrities. They might be in our eyes, but ultimately they are human beings and they need to vote and they need to use their voice for the betterment of their society. And unfortunately, not all of 
people. You know, it stands to reason not every wrestler is going to be a liberal or is going to be a Democrat. You know, I, I'm amazed that people are so surprised that there are individuals that would support Donald Trump. It's almost like, oh, we don't care if Jackson Riker supports Donald Trump. What pisses us off is the fact that he voiced it. I guarantee you there are a lot more Republicans who probably uh, back Donald Trump that work in WWE. I'm pretty sure the owner of the company does. And it's really amusing because people are like saying, oh, I can't wait for him to get a future endeavor. Mate, if Vince McMahon gets his hands on this, he's probably going to make the guy universal champion next. Because if he rewarded Braun Strowman in a way he did for shitting on the independents, just imagine what he's going to do to reward old big bollocks Riker over here for supporting the president of the United States. It is what it is. It's disappointing but I think also the reaction needs to be tempered with the fact that he's just one man's voice. And, you know, uh, Jeremy Miller, for instance, who's associated with his podcast. Now, before people go off on him for his opinions, Jeremy Miller is actually a very nice guy. And, you know, he is entitled to the respect and support of what he chooses. Now, you know, in a relatively eloquent fashion, especially for Jeremy Miller... <laughs> Um, he, he basically put up a tweet saying that people might not necessarily agree with Jackson Riker, but the vitriol and the hate that he's getting in response, he's unnecessary and disgusting. And also he was very disappointed in the way that a lot of the WWE superstars reacted to him. I understand that. I don't necessarily agree with that um, notion. But at the same time, there is something to be said about still having respect for other people's opinions. And it is very frustrating when... All I hear about all the time, especially as a mixed race guy who spent his whole life being racially abused or abused for God knows what things, you know, countless things. It is very disappointing to see people preach on social media and on TV and every other source of me. Oh, we need to respect. We need to understand equality. Well, we also have to practice what we preach. We can't be out here telling Jackson Riker that he needs to burn. He put up a post of his cousin's drawing. Uh, of the Forgotten Sons. They'd done some sort of art piece. Now, it was actually a really good art piece, and it drew so much ire. People were like, yeah, fuck your cousin. It's like, how is that even... First of all, you know, <laughs> just, you know, brutally destroying his cousin by association of his opinions is fucking ridiculous. But also, it's this notion, and I'm not going to drag it on too long because, frankly, I'm warbling on enough. I'm going to leave it here. For me... If you respond in a vitriolic manner that doesn't make a point or strongly dedicate your opinion to a cause that is just or right, then you are just as bad. You know, if you're saying to Jason Riker, fuck you, I hope your family dies. Fuck you, A, your cousin. Fucking burn. Oh, Donald Trump is scum, etc., etc. That may be the case. But the way you word things and the way you attack people, that speaks about you as an individual more so than it does the individual you are having a word with. For instance, if someone comes up to me and calls me a fucking packy, which has happened thousands of times, the way I respond and the way I handle that situation is what will define me and my moral compass. If I just immediately pick up a shovel which, of course, as you know, on this podcast, shovels are very popular, and I just crown the cunt, what does that say about me as a person? Oh, I'm going to take your fire and escalate it by pouring even more gasoline and fire on things. That is a stupid way of dealing with things in society, but that is also the case. I still maintain that liberal is bullshit, as is conservative is bullshit. We need to have one encompassing viewpoint, which is that for the betterment of everybody in our society, irregardless of their class. And when people break that class or when people rock the boat for whatever reason, regardless of who they are, they are punished. But unfortunately, people would rather hold on to this archaic idea of red versus blue. <laughs> You know, Democrat versus Republican, liberal versus conservative. It's it's stupid is what it is. Division creates more opposition, more aggression, more vitriol, whereas unity and equality creates betterment through society, in my opinion. The only time red versus blue was ever good was that old like YouTube series when it was... Rooster uh... Teeth. Yeah, the fucking halo. It was all the halos. Such a nerd. 
Oh, shut up. You probably loved it, too. I watched like two episodes. It was quite funny, but what it was was essentially going wildly off topic. What it basically was was just a load of fuck nugget college students putting a voiceover <laughs> clips of Halo. Uh, That's what. Yeah. But the funny thing is, so it good, rocketed to the moon. They're probably loaded now, so better play to them. Yeah, it's it's probably my preference when it comes to Red versus Blue. Uh, other than that, I just I get very pissed off, and very upset with this idea that you know people i see them yelling all the time on social media did you vote for a conservative you're scum did you not vote for labor instead oh you we should all vote for labor i remember people saying during our last election oh don't vote for anyone else other than labor because it's a wasted vote what do you mean it's a wasted vote no it isn't a vote irregardless of whether your party wins or not if you have voted with honesty and with integrity as to what you believe is correct for the future of your society and your government, you have voted correctly. So when people say like, oh, you know, some people vote Green Party, that was a fucking waste. No, it wasn't, because people believed in it. And whether you like it or not, you have to accept that people believed in the Conservative Party, which is why they voted him in. Is that a mistake in retrospect? Most likely. But the choice was made. You know, and what people's people's immediate response to this is not, oh, well, fuck, you know, shit. Well, OK, let's see what we can do to fix the situation. Now, nah, let's just fucking abuse the people who chose outright in the first place. People are like, fuck you cunts who voted for Donald Trump. It was apparently quite a large amount, judging by what's been seen. So, you know, is it? A mistake to vote for Trump? Most likely. Most probably. Trump is an arsehole, at least in my opinion. However, I'm also not an American who has to walk out of my house every day with the fear that I might get shot at just for having a different fucking shade of skin. So it's very difficult for me to really understand that. You know, despite not being white, I still live with the majority of white privilege under my umbrella regardless of what issues I've had to deal with as a mixed race individual. You know, I don't have to wake up every single day and be marginalized in the same way. It's very difficult for me to really have much more of an opinion on it. All I can say is if you're picking up your social media and thinking, I'm going to tell Jackson Riker that he should die. Just give yourself a little bit of thought for a moment, sit down, run that through your head Understand what you're about to say. Think before you tweet. Think before you send. And just think about how that reflects on you as a person. Because I, as an individual society, if I see that, I think less of you, as well as Jackson Riker, for his opinions. And Jackson Riker, whether you like it or not, is still entitled to his opinions, no matter how fucking dumb and asinine they might be. And honestly, if you hate them that much, why bother empowering him at all? Yeah, it was. It's very much the case of turn your back on things like that. For instance, how many times have I heard people say, "Oh, fucking hate John Cena." Don't watch him then. You know, when he comes out, you know, just being complete apathy will shut someone down. If everybody stood up and turned around whenever a wrestler that they despise came out, nobody would give a shit. But the more vitriol, the more response you give to people, the more that proves to powers above. Well, they're still getting a response. That's just the way it is. It's very difficult. Now, a wrestler who got a response, which was good and worthy, was Drake Maverick, who picked himself up a shiny NXT contract, courtesy of good old Triple H. Uh, Burial Master strikes again. So Drake Maverick, unfortunately, fell at the final hurdle in his dream to capture the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, or at least the interim title, uh, to El Hijo del Fantasma, which is, by the way, a beautiful name. Uh, although Vince will no doubt call him Hijo and be done with it. <laughs> uh, for me, it was a very magical moment. It was a very emotional moment. However, I must bring us back about a month or so. Have we all forgotten Drake Maverick allegedly being released by WWE and, you know, almost, um, shall we say, posting this very emotional response to this news, this situation? Obviously, it's very difficult for me to deep dive onto this, but I don't personally think, although it's a wonderful moment, and I'm obviously extremely happy for Drake Maverick, 
I now have to question whether his firing or release was legitimate. Because if you look at everything, I do feel like I got worked. I do. Because when he got released, it seemed very heartfelt. But now I'm looking back at it, now that he's got his contract, you know, you don't know he may have got that contract before. I know his emotion, his outpouring was wonderful. It really was. But it's a bit of a weird one because not only is it a case of, well, you released a shit ton of other people who don't seem to have picked up that kind of contract, even though he has... But also, during his promo, you know, he discussed, oh, I've only got a few more matches left. I'm involved in this title tournament. And if this is my last ever opportunity, then I'm going to make something of it. For me, it all just feels like a bit of a work. And so when people are coming out and saying, oh, Triple H is so wonderful and Vince McMahon is scum and all that. Vince McMahon, in my mind, is absolutely a colossal anus. However, I have to kind of refute people saying that Triple H is a good guy for giving him a contract, particularly when all is said and done, Vince will still have control over everybody who is employed. Yeah, I mean, like you say, the moment itself was great. Um, I'm I'm excited to see Drake Maverick stick around. He's always an entertaining guy. I'm happy he still has a job, but... Uh, I'm with you. I'm feeling uh, feeling a little worked on this one because it was just, it's an interesting thing. You know, people definitely, you know, Nick Payne probably jumping all over Triple H's cock. All that really matters is Drake Maverick is still employed. He's an NXT and he can still continue having great matches. He can still stay employed in the place he wants to be where he's happy. And when it boils down to it, that's all that really matters. Yeah, I think actually you put a nice exclamation point on that. Despite my uncomfortable nature around how it's been booked in some ways, I'm thrilled for him. And I don't think he should have ever been released in the first place. I genuinely think he is one of... Do you know what, right? Everyone goes crazy about our truth all the time. And although he's funny, I must admit I'm a little bit fucking tired of his shtick. It just bores me. It does. It bores me. It's not for me. You know, I just don't find him that funny. He's not my cup of tea. That being said, he's a lovely guy. But I think about Drake Maverick and everything he's done, the way he elevated that 24-7 title. I think that our truth could, it could be argued, would not be even nearly as over if it wasn't for Drake Maverick and the amount of work he put into making our truth look like a G as well. So I think that our truth, when it's all said and done, Although he's fantastic in his own right for what he does, even though it's not my cup of tea, I think Drake Maverick deserves arguably even more love and respect. Let's be honest, he's fucking tiny, but he's phenomenal. He's a great worker. He's a magnificent promo. He's always been wickedly entertaining. And if people go back and watch his stuff in TNA when he was EC3's little lackey and when he was, you know, Dixie Carter's kind of almost faux bodyguard slash you know admin assistant kind of thing he was hysterically funny one of my favorite all-time drake maverick moments when he was spud of course which is you know his very famous kind of name and also the name that he garnered when he worked on the indie scene over here he uh he goes up to the american wolves when they were doing a uk tour and they're trying to find out who the secret investor is of tna and and for anybody who remembers it was mvp wasn't a fantastic story but what was fantastic was him going up to uh davy richards and eddie edwards and slapping him across the face and going right you two who's the investor eh who's the investor it's just really funny this midget fucking english geezer slapping big american lads around and anyone who's met eddie edwards and davy richards well no they're not a humongous men either (laughs) so it gives you an idea of how hysterical it is but he would always give everything and still does to this day from drake maverick's perspective nothing but congratulations from everyone involved because i think you know when we're talking about a guy who has worked in the way he has he is so deserving of all the love he gets so full credit to drake maverick now carl wilkinson Will you be watching some wrestling this weekend? Oh, there is some wrestling this weekend, isn't there? Are we spoiled? Aren't we spoiled indeed? So, it's time for us to get in your house. <laughs> that sounds rapier than it should. WWE NXT TakeOver in your house. First of all, if I do not get the in your house set from back in the day, I am going to be furious 
because as far as I'm concerned, that is the most important thing. But we're going to do a very quick fire preview, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, Carl Wilkinson, I'm going to read out the matches, and I want you to very quickly give us your quick predictions of what you think might happen, and I'll tag mine on as we go. Tommaso Ciampa versus Karrion Cross in a singles match. Got to be Karrion Cross. This is his debut match. Him and Scarlett Bordeaux are going to look so fucking good. And I think Ciampa's just kind of... Not necessarily gatekeeping now, but uh, he's definitely gonna gonna get his ass beat. Yeah, I've got Karen Cross winning. Uh, I have no reason to understand why he wouldn't win. I don't think it hurts Tommaso Ciampa to lose to a man his size and power either, and it will also be a highly credible and very physical matchup. Charlotte Flair defends the NXT Women's Championship in a triple threat match against Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. Hello. Yeah, that's going to be a fucking banger, isn't it? I'm going with my heart on this one over my brain. I would really like EO to win. Nothing against Charlotte. She's still one of, if not the best performer, male or female, in the company. I think... I, I don't think Rhea's going to get it back. Unless... No, no. I'm, I'm sticking with EO on this one. I think she'll probably pin Rhea Ripley to get the title. I don't think Charlotte's going to be involved in the decision. And... Yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah, I do think this match has been set up with the betterment of trying to improve the women's division again and bring more glory, more high profile to it. That's why Charlotte Flair was sent down, so to speak, to NXT because she just elevates everything that she's in, whether people like it or not. And even if you don't like her and you hate her and you think, mm, she's only a wrestler because of her second name and, 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 and all that fucking bollocks I hear every fucking day from Becky Lynn stands, you're still going to watch because you want to see her get her ass beat. So, irregardless, this is good for business. Uh, I actually think this is difficult for me. I thought Charlotte Flair would retain because she's quite a big star. However, the fact that it's a triple threat suggests to me that somebody is going to get a pinfall over the other without Charlotte Flair being involved, and that is their way of getting the belt away from her while keeping her looking strong. So I'm going to go with Rhea Ripley to retain, to get her belt back, and to get one over on Charlotte Flair um, in reference to, of course, their WrestleMania match. Uh, Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. I mean, I don't really care, but, uh, because, you know, Finn Balor, don't care. But, uh, Damian, I think Damian Priest should get the win on this one. They've kind of been hot and cold with him, start and stop, but, uh, I think a win over Finn Balor would be pretty, pretty good. Huge for his career in NXT. I do as well. However,. They don't really know what they're doing with Finn Balor. And to be honest, Finn Balor, right, he was sent back to NXT. And even then, he still hasn't felt like a big star to me. He's had some good matches, Johnny Gargano, Ilya Dragunov. But when it's all said and done, I am actually a little bit disappointed with just how little faith they've had in him. And I'm not surprised because obviously anyone who listens to this podcast regularly will know I'm not a huge fan of him, but I think he's wildly overrated. He's just not my cup of tea. Yes, he's very beautiful. Yes, he's very shiny. Yes, he was phenomenal in Japan. And for fuck's sake, I don't know how many times I have to say it. I don't hate Finn Balor. I just think the Japanese wrestlers as a whole and guys who worked in the NJPW system really struggle to adapt to a WWE star. When people say to me, uh, AJ Styles, uh, AJ Styles, numb nuts, had about two years in Japan, and before that, he had about 16 years in America. So wind it in. Keith Lee defends the North American Championship against Johnny Gargano. Oh, suit you, sir. <clears throat> this one is incredibly difficult for me to pick because I love both guys so much. Johnny Gargano has been my favorite NXT superstar forever. This heel turn with Candice is incredible. But... How can you vote against Keith Lee? It's so fucking difficult. I'm going to go with Johnny on this one, and it breaks my heart to say it, but I think him and Candice are going to do some sort of shenanigans, and Johnny's going to get the North American title. Yeah, so I don't know how much you saw of NXT this week, but they opened up with Candice Michelle versus me and him. Uh, this then Candice, Candice Michelle, Ray. wow. Candice Michelle! <laughs> Money. Sorry, I've got Candice Michelle on the brain. I always have done. Candice LeRae, who, by the way, is looking so good as a heel. Oh, yeah, she oh. is. I continuously make this argument, right? Women are so much hotter when they're bad. Prove me wrong. Look at look at Trish Stratus, mate, when she was a heel and she was wearing that dark wedding dress. Swing. Look at Lita when she was with Edge. Swing. Look at Nikki Bella as a heel. Swing. Anyway, I'm done being correct and as pervert. The reality is women are so much hotter when they're heels. That's just that's my point of view, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> 
yeah, it was it was trash. It was I gotta be honest, I hated it. So it ended up being a mixed tag team match with Johnny Gargano being a complete and utter fuck quick because he was like, I haven't got my ring gear on. Now I think he's quite good as a heel, however, I hate the fact that he went from being quite literally the guy who would fight God himself for the opportunity to be proven and now all of a sudden he's like oh I'm a total bitch and I don't want to fight anyone it's like I don't believe that I think that's too much of a swing from what he used to be and also seeing garbage like oh, I just it annoys me I don't know you know it's worth checking it out but during this terrible match he was bumping for me in which I don't particularly mind I'm not I, you know I'm not against uh, intergender wrestling per se I don't think it really helped either party it was just to make Johnny Gargano look a bit stupid and also he drove a key into the eye of Keith Lee or shall we say Key Lee oh, ho, ho, ho. oh you did it you went there yeah, I know right I, yeah oh you think I went there no word of a lie Mauro Ranallo, straight after, right, um, Johnny gets a sneak. I think um, Candice LeRae pinned me again after Keith Lee being incapacitated with a key to, in the eye. And I, no word of a lie, Mauro Ranallo says, ah, oh, that must have been the key to victory. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> By the way, um, Mauro Ranallo, infinitely not as good when Nigel McGuinness is not at the commentary table with him. I love Beth Phoenix. I think she's fantastic. However, having two face commentators and no heel dynamic whatsoever is really trashy and it makes the commentary really one-sided for me. So it doesn't matter how good Mauro Ranallo is, because he is, he's amazing. It's play-by-play. Play. Um, without that heel value, really doesn't work for me. But yeah, I just think that for a match that should be utterly spectacular, I think the build has been garbage and I hate it. I absolutely hate this. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I, I'm going to hide behind my wife. It's like, no. Like, just no. It's just really cheap and tacky and nasty. And also, I feel like it demeans... We're talking about four of the best superstars in wrestling. Keith Lee is amazing. Johnny Gargano is amazing. Candice LeRae and Mia Yim are both incredible assets to the women's division. And they're all fucking around in this, uh, you know, I'm going to defend my boy for ahoy, ahoy, ahoy. Like, it's just like, what the fuck is this shit? It's just tacky and it doesn't need to be done. Make this the monstrous matchup that it is. I don't want to see a match where Keith Lee is trying to kill him and he just spends the whole match running away and trying to... He also, um, you know, gave him a suspected broken hand as well. It's just, yeah, it's just tacky, you know. Finding ways to try and equal the odds is what they're doing. That being said, I would like to see Johnny Gargano win. I don't think Keith Lee... Having the North American Championship is vital. I also don't think that he needs it from a... Uh, character perspective I don't think he needs it for credibility I think he's so good I think he's so special and it wouldn't surprise me to be honest if WWE fancy the idea of calling him up soon so I'm going to go with Johnny Gargano to capture the North American Championship uh, a women's six man tag match which seems to have just been thrown in for the sake of it uh, Mia Yim Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox. oh look out <laughs> versus Candice oh, yeah. Ray, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez uh, I feel like I've been going a lot with uh, <clears throat> the heels here, but I don't know. I feel like the heel team is still going to win this one. I know Tegan does need to get the win back against Dakota at some point, but I she think got the first one though. Oh, did she? Fuck! It's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, remember they had the first NXT. match. She had that. They had that match. They blew. Remember they blew the fucking rivalry oh, by having the match. Yes. A couple of weeks okay. before their big old street fight, and Tegan Knox yes. won it first, and then okay, yes. uh, Dakota Kai won the rematch at Takeover, courtesy of Raquel Gonzalez, and then I believe she won the cage match, which is kind of the exclamation point to the rivalry. Oh, then yeah, I don't think the face team has a leg to stand on. I, th I think the heels are just going to take this one. You don't think Tegan Knox's team has a leg to stand on? I think that's incredibly insensitive to Tegan Knox and her ACL injuries. It is, and I immediately feel bad for saying it because she is an absolute babe. But oh my god, look out! First, first act, first mode activated. Carl Wilkinson, I believe it's Hikaru Shida number one, and then Tegan Knox number two. Uh easy, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I must admit, when it comes to first mode, Yoshirai is very high on my list, although I think Kyrie Sane might be number one. 
I am. It's because she's so adorable. Oh, she's so sweet. I just want to hug her every time I see her. And I know that makes me sound like a cretinous creep, and so I'm just going to be quiet. But yeah, she's so beautiful and so kind and so lovely, and I'm f- thrilled for her that she managed to get married. And also, fuck everybody on social media is like, I don't know who her husband is, therefore I don't recognise her marriage. Shut the fuck up. That's Seriously, not how people. marriage works. <laughs> apparently, it is according what? to wrestling fans, mate. Apparently, oh. it is. Oh, you didn't post a picture of your husband, therefore it doesn't count. <laughs> Such an Instagram bullshit mentality. Um, I hate people. Yeah, so do I. So do I. Adam Cole defends the NXT Championship against Velveteen Dream. Um, do you think this is going to be a cinematic one? It is a cinematic one, and it's already been okay. filmed, apparently. It should be noted as well as a quick side note, a little bit of news. don't know if you have any interest or any kind of comment on it. Apparently, NXT talent were not happy with the fact that they were called in to record this match. Uh, apparently, the recording, there was a problem with it. Apparently, it was raining outside, so they had to wait, because this is a street fight, I believe, and it's being recorded outside. Very much Eddie Guerrero, John Cena-esque. Anyone remember that banger of a street oh, fight in the car parking so lot? so good. Yeah, well, I'm a, I think, yeah, I know, that might be, for me, the most forgotten and most impressive street fight I ever saw. Um, I love that match. I think that is really underrated. If I can find a link to it, I'll stick it on our social media, uh, particularly our Instagram, because I won't get in as much trouble for posting it on there. Uh, but yeah, it's been recorded. Apparently, they had to wait until late for it to stop raining. Then NXT talent, by the time they finished recording it, they didn't get back home until about six or seven in the morning. People feel for the lack of payment and that, that they're just basically treated poorly. I can't say I'm overly surprised. Obviously, not many people have much sympathy for it when you consider what's going on at the moment. And, you know, that might be rightfully so. But needless to say, it was a side note that I wanted to point out because I did see that it was quite a prominent uh, point on a lot of dirt sheets and rumor mills and things like that. Good old Tuna Meltzer had reported it, so it must be true. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Velveteen Dream is going to win here because there is a huge suggestion the Undisputed Era going up very, very soon. Um, what do you think, mate? Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Cole's been champion for over a year now. It's been an incredible run. The Undisputed Era is the best thing NXT has ever had. And I am cautiously optimistic with a main roster run. And I would just, I'd like to talk about the, the crew kind of being out for all hours of the night as well. Just a quick note from what I saw online. Apparently, the NXT talent, they were like required to be you know, standing forever because they were the crowd for Raw and SmackDown and NXT. So they already stood all fucking day trying to go, yeah, woo, I'm so excited. And then they had to fucking sit in their cars for hours because it was pissing down rain and they couldn't film the street fight. Oh, what a, what a tough mm. life being an NXT recruit. But I gotta be honest. I would have enjoyed that. Like call me. Yeah, it would have been weirdo. that bad. I would have been, well, can you imagine being like with all your mates, with your bros and your sisters, like just hanging out and just being like, oh, cool. Like, you know, just, uh, yeah, okay, it's an inconvenience, but I don't think it's terrible when you consider, you know, I think, no offense, Velveteen Dream, but as a black man, I'm sure there are much more important things. And I'm sure he's probably not whinging about it, to be fair, because he gets the bigger picture. But when you consider everything that's going on at the moment, I do think that that's kind of the least of their issues. <laughs> I would love to sit around for hours hanging out with my friends. I haven't seen like my D and D group or anyone other than my mother, whom I love dearly, but I haven't seen like anyone in f- six weeks. No, no, 10 weeks. Probably. I would really like this shit to be over now. I just got this fantastic image of like a big old mini car, like a, a mini bus or something, or, you know, these big old fucking Hummers. And there's like Karrion Cross, Scarlet Bordeaux, Candice LeRae, um, Donny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, maybe Tegan Knox or somebody, and Tokoko, whatever. They're all like stuffed into this car. They're all like playing Monopoly or something. Just the idea of it amuses the fuck out of me. And frankly, I want to see more of that. You know, it, uh, to me, it just humanizes them and makes them a little bit more relatable and a little bit more accessible. So. You know, I, I, I feel for them to a certain extent. Uh, I worked as a postman for many, many, many years, and that meant I was just basically stood up for 10 to 12 hours a day. But at the same time, I was doing it every day, six days a week, 50 hours a week. So, 
you know, 50, 60 hours a week. I mean, my record, I think, was 82 hours in a week. That was a horrible, Jesus horrible Christ. week. Yeah, that was a horrible, horrible week. Yeah, and the funny thing is, right, because I did so much overtime, uh, just talking amongst yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, while we're talking about this. So, yeah, the funny thing is, I remember getting my paycheck, and it wasn't even double what I would get. So I was on a 38-hour contract, so I didn't even get double my pay because my tax bracket went up. Because of the amount of hours I did. So actually, I only earned like an extra 250 quid. Now, I say only. Obviously, it was still a whopping great payday, especially for I was paid weekly as well, which is always good. Um, but yeah, no, I just, yeah, I was I was not happy. By the way, Raw Mail, worst company to work for in fucking England. One of the, genuinely one of the worst companies I've ever known. Stay the fuck away from it if you're English and you ever have any consideration of working for the post office or Raw Mail. Don't do it, mate. You're worth more than that. Whoever you are, if you're listening, do not fucking go near Royal Mail. It's fucking garbage. Absolute awful company with a horrible track record when it comes to mental health and abuse. Um, Getting back on topic. Yeah, uh, Velveteen Dream, mate. I've got him uh, winning, and I think Adam Cole's going up. Is that uh, something that you share? It is, yeah. I th- like I said, Cole's been champ for go. over a year. He's done incredible things. Um, Having a new champ is always an exciting time, and Velveteen Dream has been... I think he deserves this. Patrick Clark has put so much work into this character, into his career, be kicked off tough enough. And now he's just, he's this incredible performer. The kid deserves it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I do love Velveteen dream. And if dare I say Adam Cole as champion has kind of got a little bit boring, even though it is very entertaining. By the way, their limo segment on um, NXT is must-watch. Hysterically good fun. Kyle O'Reilly wearing a fedora and a suit is a fucking G. He's my hero. I love him. He's so good. Like, he is genuinely a god, and I'm so privileged that I've not only met him a few times, but also had the privilege. I got to see him wrestle Kushida in a uh, 30-minute submission-style match. Uh, yeah, I was very, oh, very, very I'm, happy. I mean, he's just another type one diabetic that's also Canadian and also named Kyle. Oh, yeah. Like, he's everything I want to be. <laughs> he's the athletic I'm already two, of you. I'm already two thirds of the way there. You are evolving. See, if you get your Pokemon evolution status, then you will turn into Kyle O'Reilly eventually. That's what you can aim for. That is all I could ever ask for in life. <laughs> I look forward to the day. I look forward to the day. But yeah, he's a very cool guy. I've seen him wrestle. So I also got to see him wrestle, of all people, uh, Paul Robinson, <laughs> which was just amazing. <laughs> Uh, while being part of NXT, they sent him over as a goodwill gesture to progress his Super Strong Style tournament, and he took part in that. Um, he also wrestled uh, Chris Ridgway, which I thought was utterly, utterly phenomenal. Uh, I can't remember who he lost to in the semifinals. I think it might have been David Starr. I can't remember, but either, either way, it was very cool. Very cool to see him, and uh, yeah, lovely guy. Really, really cool guy. Just uh, just hilarious as well. Really good fun interacting with everybody, and he did it all for free. I know that he was a WWE superstar, so he couldn't charge money for you know appearances and all that, but he stood there, and there was a long line, and you know he interacted with everybody, as did Trevor Lee, to be fair, who was also part of that tournament as well. So, you know, fair enough. Just wanted to give a shout-out to those boys, because, you know, in a difficult time, it's always nice to hear about how cool wrestlers can be. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, NXT TakeOver in your house will be this weekend. We will be covering it for the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're watching it live and you want to send in your interactions as we go, please do not hesitate to do so. You can use our social media at WrestlePlug across all the brands, not to mention WrestlePlug.com. Send us a little message. Let us know what you think of TakeOver. If there's anything you like or don't like, we'll be happy to read out on our review of TakeOver in your house, which will most likely be recorded probably straight after the event or at least, you know, early in the day, uh, the day after. So either way, it will be covered and that podcast will be available for you probably within 24 hours of said event. Uh, Carl Wilkinson, anything else you'd like to discuss before we wrap up the State Wrestling Address? Well, uh, we'll always throw out there that we will most likely have an Xbox Live party and you don't need an Xbox to join. You can get the Xbox One app and you're more than welcome to join us for a little watch along. Like no one in my house watches wrestling. So it's always nice to just sit here with the boys, just watching te- watch some wrestling. It's uh, makes it a lot more fun. So like you're more anyone who's listening, more than welcome to join us. Yeah, and also the great thing is because it's obviously on the WWE Network, 
it's going to be much more easy and accessible to watch while chatting to the boys because I know that there was a few problems with AEW because it was very difficult for people who weren't buying it to find a stream, etc. Because, of course, or everybody was buying it. Am I right, boys? <laughs> Actually, we paid for it, didn't we? We're yeah, we both real did. Fans. <laughs> we paid for it. We're real fans. You're not. Yeah. Um, yeah, never mind the fact that it's the first time I've ever paid for a pay per view, but never mind. <clears throat> oh, wait, Firefest. I did pay for the first Firefest as well. So yeah, no, um, the Xbox Live Party will be open. And like Carl says, you don't need an Xbox. All you've got to do is download the app. It's available on Android and iOS. Literally, just go to your Play Store or App Store, type in Xbox, download the Xbox app. You can sign in for free. You don't need to pay for anything. All you need is an email account. Uh, some people can already use ones they've got. I, for instance, use my Gmail account. Literally, all we do, sign in. And once you've done that, if you want to join us, all you've got to do, send us a message on WrestlePlug. I'll let you know mine. Um, game of tag or Carl's game of tag you're more than welcome to add us and game if you do have an Xbox and if not all you got to do is just add that and we'll invite you in plug your headphones in to your device that you're using it on whatever that might be an iPad or a phone or whatever and chat away with us while you watch in the comfort of your own home and hopefully enjoy a fantastic NXT event that's it from the State of Wrestling Address ladies and gentlemen loads to delve into uh, you know a lot of unfortunate difficulties in the world right now um so obviously if anybody would like any kind of direction as to how they can help the cause there are plenty of links available plenty of sites to donate to there are plenty of books uh, articles documentation that you can read to understand why privilege more to understand why black lives matter the way they do do not hesitate to educate yourself and if you're having trouble finding those you can contact us and we will link you to all of those that are available and if you're watching this on youtube there's a very good reason why the screen is essentially blacked out and that is because we stand with the solidarity and the love of everybody who is black in this world uh, from myself and Carl Wilkinson, thank you very much for joining us for the state of it, the state of wrestling address. We will be back next week, same time, same place, hopefully with something a little bit more happy to discuss. But until then, thank you very much for listening and we'll catch you very soon for more nonsense from the WrestleBlog. This content was brought to you by the WrestleBlog Podcast.